From a basement gamer to an international icon, Joel Zimmerman is the modern embodiment of the audiovisual experience. With the popularity of dance music attributing to non-stop records across the industry, Deadmau5 and his fans surely view music from a different perspective. As a commodity, the music that you listen to daily may provide a catchy chorus or an intense or emotional drop, but when you are listening to it live, the experience needs to be that much more immersive. Though the art of music production can require a degree path of its own, the time and effort Joel put into his latest Cube V3 tour, which started in March of 2019, shaped the way he uses social media and affected the way his fans interact with him. In analyzing the work of the Canadian Mastermind, I will primarily focus on Joel's use of Reddit and his very own forum, which is the arena for all Deadmau5 fans. Unlike his uses of Twitter and Facebook for minimal Deadmau5 announcements, participants in Deadmau5's more low-key approach to social media benefit from a raw view of the genius behind the mouse helmet and most impressively, the cube itself. If we go back to the beginning, no icon exists properly without a solid name. So, where did the one-of-a-kind name like Deadmau5 come from? As I mentioned before, the story begins with a teenage Joel gaming with friends only to be rudely interrupted by a power outage. When his dad finally approached him about a deathly smell, Joel discovered a dead mouse who had eaten through a live wire and shorted the computer he was playing on. As you can imagine, all Joel's friends started calling him the dead mouse guy. When attempting to crown the username in an online chat room, dead mouse was too long so the only logical way to shorten the name was with a number. The name stuck and Deadmau5 started uploading produced songs in 2002. With a coding background and enough imagination, anything is possible. This idea is exemplified when comparing the work of Deadmau5 to that of other electronic dance music producers. In the mainstream, producers strive to be verified on social media sites like Twitter and Instagram. Whether they are posting pictures of their multi-million dollar cars or private jets to the next festival, it is rare to see inner workings of an artist's creativity like the content provided by Deadmau5. Though the account has a limited amount of posts and none recently, the Cube V3 Instagram shows samples of handcrafted visuals that Deadmau5 uses in live shows. This alone adds a level to the content that the artist delivers. Not only can you hear new music, but you can take part in the audio-visual experience in any environment you prefer. While this insider view of content creation is glossed over on main social media sites, the content Joel shares with subreddit followers and visitors of deadmau5.com provides an even more comprehensive look at the technology behind his expertise. Posts on the official website tend to arrive during peaks of Joel's creativity. Whether it's real-time controlled bees that can fly around the visual space, or a helmet that can dance with you, Joel is sure to share his technological journey with his following. The mood and persona portrayed by Joel is quite overt. It's, it's super easy to dream up wild and crazy stupid shit. It's another thing to get someone to give you permission to do it. Even in his text posts. As recent as November 2019, Joel exclaimed his dislike for the producers Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, begging the men to stop counting down every drop and commentating their whole DJ spectacle. The rant includes, how hard is it to get through a set without picking up the mic for three seconds, without asking how everyone is, how they're feeling, to put their hands up or count to three, or what they had for room service. It's bad enough they're playing the worst music I've heard all decade, much less describing it every four seconds on the PA. As you can imagine, Deadmau5 fans from all over agreed with the complaint, and this can provide some insight into why Deadmau5 can seem so arrogant at times. This arrogance isn't new to a millionaire, but the way Joel delivers content sets him apart from others in the EDM space. The identity of the man behind the mask has not only been shaped by record sales, but the integration of music and visuals as one and the same rather than separate, leading visuals to be neglected by less talented artists. Whether Joel is sharing his musical knowledge through his masterclass, or just messing with his visual software on Twitch for hours at a time, it is a different experience being able to see that some of the most groundbreaking visuals are created with more than a BPM in mind. Not only does scrolling his own subreddit give him a chance to tell off someone less intelligent than him or post a Google link in case someone can't get it themselves, Deadmau5 connects with fans unlike any other producer. For example, on the 1st of May in 2019, a post titled 
custom retro synthwave visuals get submitted to r slash deadmouse. Though only about 100 people interacted with the post out of 34.4 thousand members on the subreddit, the most important comment read, As you can imagine, I started hyperventilating a little. When I should have been studying for finals, I decided to teach myself how to create 3D motion graphics. Long story short, less than 30 minutes on YouTube and a questionable copy of a popular 3D modeling software got me closer than I ever had been to a celebrity in my virtual life. So you know what I did to respond? I replied to his comments saying I'm working on it while I figure out what video codec he's even talking about. All the while I'm creating a second version because the first one wasn't the quality I thought it should have been. I sent Joel Zimmerman a private message on Reddit. I sent off a Dropbox link and sat back to see what would happen next. Within days I saw my creation on the live demonstration of the third version of Deadmau5's Legendary Cube. A later post to the subreddit prefaced with, kinda inspired by Colorado Guy, showed a transformation of the simple moving grid in my video to a real-time visualization that can be customized in more ways than I could have ever imagined. The idea I had in my head, now only a couple weeks in the past, was a full-blown creative masterpiece in the works. Fast forward a couple months, Joel applies a new technology to the synthwave graphic. Instead of a mouse head moving at a constant tempo, why not wire the mouse helmet up with a gyroscope and record the head movement realistically? He did just that. And now the November 1st Red Rock show seemed further away than summer after winter break. Then it happened. Everything went dark, and the story I was sharing with my friends and others close by was about to be revealed for the first time. Never before had a simple thought turned into a tidal wave of emotion. The ability for someone to look at something already created from scratch and reverse engineer it with much more talent and resource truly shows what the creative mind of the internet is capable of. They want to go home.